Hello! Today we're reading Exploring the Solar System. Welcome to the universe, population you. The universe is everything that exists in all of space and all of time. The universe has billions of galaxies. A galaxy is a huge collection of stars, solar systems, gas, and dust. Our galaxy is called the Milky Way. Think of our solar system as our neighborhood. The sun is at the center, and eight planets travel around it, plus moons, dwarf planets, asteroids, comets, and meteoroids. Gravity is a pulling force. Without gravity, we would float away. Because the sun is the biggest thing in our solar system, its gravity pulls everything towards it. Humans have always kept their eyes on the stars. Now we also have technology such as rockets, telescopes, satellites, rovers, and probes to help us see much further. Are you ready to blast off and explore? The Sun is a massive star of glowing gases. It's the closest star to Earth, but it's still very far away. 93 million miles. Animals and plants can live on Earth because, the sun's light, because of the sun's light and warmth. The sun and Earth are why we have seasons. Earth orbits around the sun once a year. Earth rotates on a tilted axis, so different parts of Earth receive the sun's most direct rays at different times. When the North Pole tilts toward the sun, it's summer in the top half of Earth. At the same time, it's winter in the bottom half of Earth. When the South Pole tilts towards the sun, it's winter in the top half and summer in the bottom half. Question, what do you like best about a sunrise in the morning? What do you like best about a sunset at night? Well, uh, in the morning and the night, I'd both like the nice pretty red colors and sometimes on a nice cold morning it's good to feel the warm sunrise and help warm you up. Mercury is the smallest planet in the solar system, just a little bigger than Earth's moon. It's also the closest planet to the sun. If you visited Mercury, the daylight would be seven times brighter than on Earth. Bring your sunglasses. But at night, Mercury is cold. Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere, a layer of gas that surrounds the planet. Because of this, daytime heat escapes. Mercury wins the award for most craters of any planet in the solar system. It has been bombarded by lots of asteroids and comets. Yikes. Mercury does not have a moon. Why? Because Mercury is so close to the sun, the sun's strong gravity would pull a moon out of its orbit. In 2012, NASA's spacecraft Messenger discovered frozen water at Mercury's North Pole. Question: Would you rather live on a hot planet or a cold planet? Well, I guess that depends on how hot or cold, but I think I'd rather prefer the cold to the heat. Venus is Earth's closest neighbor and the brightest object in the sky after the Sun and Moon. You can see Venus from Earth without a telescope. Life on Venus would be hard. This planet is covered in thick clouds of poisonous sulfuric acid that smells like rotten eggs. Venus isn't the closest planet to the Sun, but it is the hottest. The clouds trap heat on the surface, making it very hot. The temperature is so high, some metals would melt into liquid. Venus and Uranus are the only two planets in the solar system that rotate the opposite direction of Earth, so the sun rises in the west and sets in the east. Venus has more volcanoes than any other planet in the solar system. Question. One day on Venus lasts as long as 243 days on Earth. What would you do on such a long day? Oh, I'd be really tired. It'd be hard to stay up that long without going to sleep. Earth is the third planet from the sun and the one we call home. It has four main layers. 
the inner core, the outer core, the mantle, and the crust. Almost three quarters of Earth is covered in water. Earth is the only planet in our solar system where life is known to exist. Earth's atmosphere is a layer of gas that wraps around our planet like a blanket. It gives us the oxygen we breathe and keeps us warm. It also acts as a protective shield. When meteoroids approach Earth, they usually burn up before they have a chance to reach the surface. Question. What's your favorite thing about living on Earth? Hmm. Maybe all the water. Oh, you don't get thirsty. Mars is known as the red planet. Its surface contains iron, which rusts and gives Mars its red color. Two small moons orbit Mars, Phobos and Deimos. They aren't round like Earth's moon. They are shaped like lumpy potatoes. In 30 to 50 million years, which is a really long time, Phobos will collide with Mars or be turned into rubble, creating a ring around the planet. Ready for a climbing adventure? Mars is home to Olympus Mons, the tallest mountain in the solar system. It is almost three times as high as Mount Everest, Earth's tallest mountain. Olympus Mons is a volcano created by lava flowing up from the ground. Humans have never been to Mars, but spacecrafts have, starting in 1971. In 2021, a rover, Perseverance, and a helicopter, Ingenuity, landed there after a seven-month voyage. The helicopter collects information that a rover on the ground can't see. What a team! Ingenuity is the first helicopter to fly on another planet. What would you bring with you on your Mars mission? Mm, probably food and water and oxygen. Jupiter is the oldest and largest planet in our solar system, over twice as massive as all the other planets combined. You couldn't land on Jupiter. This stripy planet is a gas giant made up uh, mostly of hydrogen and helium and doesn't have a hard surface like Earth. Scientists don't know if Jupiter has a solid core. There's a giant storm raging on Jupiter and it's twice the size of Earth. It's called the Great Red Spot, named for the red clouds that swirl above. Winds can get as high as 425 miles per hour. Storms here can last for years. Question, what color clouds would you like to have on your planet? Oh, I don't know. I like it when the clouds are red and yellow from the sunset. Maybe, uh, maybe throw some blue and green and purple and you'd have a rainbow of clouds. Saturn is famous for its rings. The rings aren't solid. They're made up of rocks and ice. Scientists think that these pieces might have been asteroids, comets, or moons that were broken up by Saturn's strong gravity. In 2004, the Cassini spacecraft arrived at Saturn, along with its probe, Huygens. The Cassini-Huygens was the first mission to orbit Saturn. It took seven years to arrive from Earth and stayed for 13 years, gathering photos and important new information about this planet. Cassini discovered that Enceladus, one of Saturn's 82 moons, has geysers that shoot out ice and gas, the possible building blocks of life. Saturn is squashed. The planet spins so fast it gets flattened out. Question, what name would you give to a spacecraft heading to Saturn? I don't know, maybe the Saturn Explorer. Uranus is the coldest planet in the solar system. This ice giant is nearly four times the size of Earth. Uranus is blue because of the methane in its atmosphere. And Uranus has a surprise. It rotates on its side. 
All the other planets spin horizontally like tops. Scientists think that an object the size of Earth might have hit it, causing it to tilt. Because of the way Uranus spins and the position of the sun's rays, winter and summer on Uranus each last 21 Earth years. Uranus was the first planet to be discovered using a telescope. Question, if you were a planet, what would you name your moons? Ooh, I don't know. Neptune is the furthest planet in our solar system from the Sun. Because it's so far away, it doesn't get many visitors. Voyager 2 is the only spacecraft to have studied Neptune up close. Like Uranus, Neptune is an ice giant and is blue because of the methane gas in its atmosphere. In 2018, the Hubble Space Telescope discovered a storm on Neptune that was wider than the Atlantic Ocean. Neptune is the windiest planet in the solar system. Winds can reach 1,200 miles per hour. The strongest wind ever recorded on Earth was 253 miles per hour. Neptune is also dark. It's so far away from the sun, it doesn't get the same sunlight we do. The sunlight on Earth is about 900 times brighter. Question, what would you bring with you to a planet that's always dark? Hmm, maybe a flashlight and lots of extra batteries. Pluto. There was once a planet named Pluto. It was the furthest planet from the sun, but in 2006 that changed. Scientists decided Pluto was no longer a planet, but a dwarf planet instead. There are three rules for being a planet, and Pluto only meets the first two. A planet is an orbit around the sun. It is round, and it has so much gravitational force, there are no other bodies of a similar size in its region. But don't feel sorry for Pluto. It has some fascinating features. Pluto has mountains close to the size of Earth's Rocky Mountains and a big icy area that's shaped like a heart. Pluto was named by an 11-year-old girl. In 1930, Venetia Burney had the idea of naming it after the Roman god of the underworld. Her grandfather brought the name to the astronomer who discovered the planet and he liked it. Scientists think there could be many dwarf planets in our solar system. So far, they've found five. Pluto, over here, Ceres, Eris, Makimaki, and Haumea. How do we know so much about planets and stars that are so far away? Scientific agencies such as NASA and the United States are always developing new technology to allow humans and machines to travel further into space. Humans first landed on Earth's moon in 1969 and stayed for just over 21 hours. Now there are people who live and work in space for months at a time. The International Space Station is a research lab that orbits Earth. Astronauts from around the world share the space station to conduct experiments. Not every mission requires an astronaut. Space probes, satellites, and telescopes travel through space without humans on board. These machines collect scientific information to send back to Earth. You can do your own research at home. A telescope lets you study stars, planets, and galaxies. Or you can simply look up at the sky tonight and let your imagination and curiosity take you far away. What do you see? The end. And a special shout out to Charles and William. I love y'all. Have a good night.